Welcome back everyone. We're turning to our signature segment by design, where we look at how design affects our everyday lives and how a good design can help us interact with the world in better ways. Well, one obvious aspect of design comes in the form of fashion. The fashion calendar has moved on to London, where designers such as Paul Costello, Roxanda, and Richard Quinn are showing off their spring-summer 2024 collections. A slate of Chinese designers are showing there as well, including Yuhan Huang and Wishan Zhang. The British Fashion Council spearheads London Fashion Week, and this is what its chief has to say about the role artificial intelligence is playing in fashion design. It's more about sort of using AI for a research process because you don't get to these designs by using generative AI. That's going to give you really quite a homogenous view of fashion. This sort of human perspective, this idea of creativity and pushing boundaries can only be done independently. There is another way artificial intelligence is helping behind the scenes by identifying the right clothing size for customers. Junwei Sum explains. It's a shopping experience many women have had before, no matter their size, height or shape. I've gone into a store and I've wanted this pair of jeans and trousers and they haven't had my size. And you feel, yeah, you feel so like there's something wrong with you. And it's, there's nothing wrong with you. That's the store's fault. And that's largely true. There is no standard that requires a size 10, for example, in one brand to fit the same as a 10 in another. Added to that, most in-store clothing sizes start off as patterns cut for the runway, and it's hard to size up since proportions change. While runways are getting more size diverse, there's still a ways to go. AI-powered fit solutions are hoping to make a difference. From Germany's size kick to US-based startups TrueFit, Bold Metrics, and others, the idea is to reduce size uncertainty, especially in online shopping. AI platforms do this by collecting data on size and fit from across brands from millions of shoppers, comparing them and then recommending sizes to each customer. Some AI tools take measurements using body scans before serving up a recommended size. It's not quite tailor-made clothing, but the better something fits, the happier a customer will be. It could also mean fewer returns due to poor fit. Corsite Research estimates that online clothing returns could cost U.S. retailers over $25 billion in processing costs this year. While for the environment, fewer returns means fewer items ending up in a landfill. Junwei Sum, CGTN, Washington. Okay, for more on how technology is helping both customer and designers improve fit and sizing, we're joined by Laura Zwanziger, CEO and founder of Fit for Everybody. Laura, it's a real pleasure to have you on. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Okay, tell us about your company. And I find it pretty fascinating that you decided to go back to school and really to take some chances to get where you are right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I worked as a designer in New York. My background was as a designer, and fit and sizing was interesting to me from the beginning of my career. I worked on quite a few projects uh, in school as a student in design school, working with body scanners. How do we fit on a body, not the way society says a body should be, but the way it is? And when I was working in the industry, it felt like there was a disconnect. Mm. Um, getting to that first sample that I was, we wanted to make and then scaling it, what was happening in, kind of in the real world of design was not the neat and tidy bow that I wanted to see for design. Uh, so I went back to school to focus on supply chain and operations, which is where I started building Fit for Everybody. Which I find it fascinating too. I read one of your quotes, fashion is supposed to be fun. And when you hear somebody in our story saying, there's nothing wrong with you if you're a size 10, why is it so difficult for people to get a good fit from off the rack clothing? Absolutely. And I think before we can talk about fit, I think we need to talk about sizing and how that's done today and how that's flawed. So clothing is mass produced based on a lot of assumptions of how bodies in a population look. So to start, 
some segment of a population is going to be measured. Maybe they're put in body scans, maybe it's photographs or a tape measure, and some average is going to be taken of, of this data as a starting point, and that's going to have a proportion of a body, a bust, a waist, a hip, and then from that starting point, sizes are going to be created from that one body, and it's going to be sized up and sized down, and that's going to be a consistent proportion. But all bodies are not one proportion. So there's going to be a significant amount of the population that is not served, particularly mm. if that measured segment of the population doesn't reflect the general population, or if it doesn't reflect the specific population that this product is meant to be for. Let's talk about a little bit more about how AI fits in, no pun intended. And you went to school, after your fashion degree, you went to MIT. Tell me how these, how this marriage is working. Uh, just to repeat back the question, so I'm, I'm answering your question, just in terms of the transition from true designer into how do we use data for better design? Like yes, that. yes, yes. Yes. So, I mean, I, I was working as a designer very much pen and paper, talking to factories in the weeds with it before going back to school. And just, it seemed like we were doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different outcome. Uh -huh. yeah. And the process of it, not just the data side, um, I really wanted to focus on the operations side of how do we do things better in a data-driven way? We have all of this information, but how do we use it effectively and are we collecting the correct information to make better decisions so i took a variety of classes and i really pivoted while i was in business school i started really focusing on supply chain and operations for apparel how do we do that better and then what is not just the easiest data to collect but the most relevant data to collect and how do we mm. implement it in a way that is not only impactful but easy to use uh, and that really developed into what we built to act fit for everybody. Now, even with advanced technology, what are the challenges of getting the proper fit for customers? And also, you early on realized that plus size women tend to return items less frequently. So why is that important? When we look at different populations, every population has a body <laughs> uh, that needs to be catered to in the design process. and. Like I talked about with this grading process of sizing, where you start with this middle size and you just add or subtract an inch or in larger sizes, two inches, that's lazy design. Yeah. You're not using anthropomorphic data that does exist in a productive way to say, what is the predominant proportion at every, say, bus size? We can start with bus size because that in terms of when you work with fabric, that's an important parallel, to the, well, perpendicular to the floor um, measurement that that always has to be balanced for great fit in a garment. And when you're choosing not to design to, or you don't know how to design to that body, that body is a customer who's not going to be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For someone who doesn't go to stores because of two words, slim fit, I understand uh, that person. Now, look, I, you talked about class project early. I want you to talk a little bit more about that. We're kind of tied on time, but it has been exhibited at MoMA. What your What are your thoughts on that? That it's something that I don't know that we thought it was anything special when we did it. I was 19 years old when we built that we were tasked with a product development project to design for an underrepresented market at a point when plus size was kind of a dirty word yeah. so we we were at cornell university we had access to body scanners we had access to incredible people um, we worked with professor susan ashdown she's amazing mm -hmm. to really say you know we want to designed for this market, but we don't even have a dress form. Like, how are we supposed to make a pattern if we, like, we have size six dress forms, that body has nothing to do with who we're designing to. Right. And we, her name's Tallulah, is the dress <laughs> form. We uh, used a body scan. We basically, if you've ever seen a topographic map, right. We sliced that body scan, which is a bit morbid, and created basically a topography with inch thick gardening foam yeah. 
I would factor up. Yeah, I would encourage anybody who has, who has time to go online and, and take a look at that. Uh, Laura okay. Swanziger, it's been a real pleasure. I wish you nothing but a success, and you are somebody who really says there's nothing wrong with curves. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.